Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday, until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash hamnation. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great-tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like agave citrus granola. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. This is Ham Nation, episode number 174 from November 19th, 2014. Green ham and fish. Hey, it must be Wednesday night. And if it's Wednesday night, it means it's 8 o'clock central. And if it's 8 o'clock central on Wednesday night, it means it's Ham Nation time. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Don, AE5DW. We've got, uh, uh, well, we have the children running the asylum tonight because the grown-ups are gone. Gordon is gone. And uh, and Bob is gone, but uh, well, we have some grown ups. I mean, as far as age wise, but if <laughs> any other way, well, you can hang that up. We got uh, George a couple of hours to my north. Uh, George Thomas up in Jackson. How you doing tonight, George? Oh, doing pretty good, Don. I got one of my first Christmas cards of the season. Uh, just oh, nice. came in today. This is from the 2004 Buzzard Flock. It's a six meter buzzard net that meets Mondays at 8:30 p.m. Eastern time on uh, 50.155 megahertz. So I'm going to have to give that a shot and see if I can hear them over here. There you go. Awesome. And um, uh, we also have, we have Dale, who is over in, uh, in Kansas. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say old buzzard. You knew I was thinking that, didn't you? You knew I was, I wouldn't know. I would never do that. I, I knew you'd say Never say that. Say hey, that. Oh, we just got back uh, from the Caribbean, had a fantastic time, Don, and got, have my uh, Jamaican hat on here. But unfortunately, we caught a bad cold on the way back, and uh, Esther and I have both been under the weather for a couple of weeks here, or a week and a half anyway. So uh, uh, we're going to go through this, and then we're going to take a nap after the show, I think, uh, this evening. Uh, Don, go ahead. I guess so. Well, what's the temperature <laughs> there? Didn't you tell me you're in single digits there in Kansas? What's the temperature? Uh, we were. Uh, fortunately, it got up to around 50 today. Really nice. But uh, just uh, two mornings ago, it was uh, 3.7 degrees here on the weather station uh, at the at K0HYD. So uh, wow. that's way too cold uh, for this early in November. It was a record, by the way, uh, for Wichita. The previous record had been 10 uh, 50 or 60 years ago. So... Uh, it's been cold, and it's not a way to get over a cold either. So uh, we're here. We're ready to go. Got three good videos for you tonight, so it should be a, a good show. Awesome. Can't wait. Yeah, it uh, hasn't been quite that cold here. Of course, we're not having the snow like Buffalo, New York is having, where there was six feet of snow. Are you kidding me? Uh, Colorado, of course, is known for snow and cold this time of year, but uh, I think Amanda's probably staying semi-warm. How are you doing tonight, Amanda? I'm doing good. And uh, you know what? So far, we've gotten only seven inches of snow this year. So six feet, uh, that's beyond my realm of understanding. I, I couldn't do that. But I did hear they are paying people to go out to the Buffalo Bill Stadium and uh, clean up the snow. $10 an hour plus free tickets. Still wouldn't really? do it. To, uh, to, feed, no, wait, to feed what is this? To feed what? Uh, to clean off the snow from the stadium, the football stadium. Oh, 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 okay. All right. I, I thought you were saying yep. feed the buff, feed the buffalo. I'm thinking they're going to feed the buffalo. Mm, no, the, I don't think they could find the buffalo right now. But, yeah, $10 an hour and free tickets to the game. Wow. You know, I grew up in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and that was the home of Oklahoma Baptist University, the fighting bison. And, yes, they had an actual bison in a pen out in the back. And you could go by and you could look at the bison or the buffalo or whatever. So. Uh, the, I, I had a, I had a I had an Oklahoma flashback for a sec. Well, I thought you said they were going out to feed the bison or feed the buffalo or something. <laughs> no, not not quite. No, Sorry. 
Good. Hey, I've got some interesting interesting news. Got a couple of pictures that we threw in the Dropbox. Uh, if you want to bring those up, Brian. Um, this is Christopher. You guys may remember Christopher. We met Christopher as a young kid at uh, oh, a young kid, a, a young man in, in Dayton, 12, 11, 10, something like that, I believe. Anyway, he, he, he had just missed his getting his call sign in Dayton, but he's got it now, obviously, KD8YVJ, and that is his bicycle mobile. I like that. Let's go look at that second one. He's it, two meters set up only. And uh, his dad, uh, Jocelyn, tells me that the ground is covered with snow, so we can't operate until maybe this weekend. We're supposed to be in the mid-50s. But uh, And his dad, Jocelyn, just actually a couple of hours ago, uh, upgraded to extra. So he is now signing uh, Stroke AE. So congratulations to Jocelyn and uh, Christopher looking sharp on that bicycle. And uh, we went through the, through, the magic, through the magic of ham radio and the AE5 DW station. We're going to look into the future. You can only see this here on Ham Nation, people. This this is a uh, this is an exclusive. That <laughs> right there, that's Christopher in the future. Awesome. Nobody cooler on a bicycle, perhaps, than Christopher, except for Peter Fonda in uh, in in Easy Rider. So uh, anyway, look at that. There's there's Christopher. All we need is a need a whip on the back of that uh, bike or something. So uh, Christopher, congratulations, and uh, congratulations to Jocelyn too for upgrading to extra. Christopher, I think, is working on his general. And it was cool to see Christopher and Sam. Uh, of course, you guys met Sam with me when we went to the uh, uh, went to the Ham Fest here in Louisiana. And Sam was eight years old and got his license that day. They actually met up and became really good friends in Huntsville. And they they keep in touch via Echolink. So it's just the, it's the coolest thing uh, that Ham Nation kind of brought those two those two guys together. And that's the future of Ham Radio. So I wanted to share that with you. So uh, congratulations, George. Anything uh, anything you got going over there? What's going on up in Jackson tonight? Well, um, pretty much the same thing. It's just been uh, really cold here this week, but I think we're going to be back in the 80s for this weekend, so that's going to be great. Uh, got some, um, well, a couple of things we're going to talk about later. Uh, one of them is going to be this thing right here. It's a little component tester that uh, I did a little hack on. And uh, also, I've got some news hot off the press from ICOM here that's not available anywhere else that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. It's so fresh, Don, that the ink is getting on my fingers here. Really? Ooh. Oh, yes. Good. That yep. Sounds good. good. I can't, can't wait to see that. I'll tell you something that you will not get any ink on your hands from, and that is the new DX Engineering catalog. Do you have it yet? This thing's great. I love this thing. DX Engineering. You need to get... There it is. That's the wrong side. Right out loud. You need to grab your new DX Engineering catalog because... Uh, DX, of course, is, well, it's DX, and it's all about get on your radio and talk in long ways. And in the spirit of the 2015 Navassa Island D Expedition, JK Antennas has introduced a new five-band Yagi. It's got a ton of performance into a relatively small size. It's an ideal antenna if you want to get on the most popular HF bands or if you want to upgrade from a tri-band trap antenna. And there's only one place you can get it, and that is DX Engineering. The Navassa five-band Yagi, it's based on a collaborative design by Dan Horvat, E73M. Places five full-size elements along the same plane. That means you get two-element monoband performance in a five-band antenna, getting 10 through 20 meters, including the work bands, through a single run of coax. It's amazing. Uh, a wide, flat SWR curve means it delivers wide-band performance, and it's also compact and relatively light. It will withstand up to 100-mile-an-hour winds. The wind load is about 9.5 square feet, so that's certainly manageable. And the tuning radius is just a little over 19 feet, so it'll fit even in a, in a modest lot. And for even more band coverage, there's an optional 6-meter add-on kit for the Navasa 5. It's called the Navasa 5 Plus, and you can uh, get that separately at DX Engineering. And DX Engineering is the only place you can get this brand-new antenna. The only place on the planet. That means you also get DX Engineering's unparalleled shipping speed. And you know what that means, right? In by uh, 10 o'clock Eastern. If it's in stock, it's on a truck headed your way tonight. DX Engineering... A major sponsor of the upcoming Navassa Island K1ND expedition. It was just recently approved. It will take place in January. And, of course, we'll have a lot more details on the Navassa Island D expedition soon. And if you're keeping track at home, Navassa Island, number one on the DXCC top 100 list. So if you want to find out more about the Navassa 5 antenna, get your Navassa 5 antenna and uh, check out the DX expedition. You can do all that at DXEngineering.com. As I said earlier, DX Engineering ships faster than anybody else in the industry. Get your order in by 10 p.m. Eastern. If it's in stock, it'll be on a truck headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, and 
Beat a price guarantee. DX Engineering helps you shrink the globe. Request this catalog I have in my hand right here. Shop online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. DXEngineering.com slash ham nation. Look at this. They even do their own PL259 plugs. That, look at the glare. That is an amazing, that's, I've got one of these things. A couple of them actually on a, on a piece of coax. These things are, man, mm, DX Engineering, just it's amazing the stuff you'll find there. DXEngineering.com slash ham nation. 24-7, it's all right there for you. DX Engineering, thank you so much for your support of Ham Nation. DXEngineering.com slash Ham Nation. Now let's check out the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline report number 1,944. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. Could paper copies of your FCC Amateur Radio license be on the endangered species list? Not if the ARRL has anything to say about it. The League has recommended the FCC continue to provide paper license documents to amateur radio licensees who want them. The regulatory agency wants to cease the routine issuance of hard copy license documents to all wireless service licensees, but will permit the agency to continue the issuance of paper documents during the transition period to specific classes of licensees that specifically request them. Under the FCC proposal, once a license application is granted, the universal licensing system will generate an official electronic license, but will no longer mail a paper copy license unless notified that the licensee wishes to receive such a document. Until new procedures are finalized, however, the Commission will continue to print and mail paper licenses unless notified to stop. That's Newsline's Hal Rogers, KHCMD. You can read the proposed changes on the FCC website at the link found in the printed edition of this week's Amateur Radio Newsline report. Valerie's been showing us the ins and outs of the logbook of the World Program, and now it appears that there was a glitch recently in processing some awards. According to the ARRL, it's been determined that some CQWPX awards program applications using the League's Logbook of the World were not properly processed. Specifically, applications for WPX credit submitted via Logbook of the World from October 8th at 0500 UTC until November 5th at 1700 UTC were never processed, but these applicants' credit cards were not charged. Applicants should now resubmit any application for WPX credits made during this period. After nearly six months on the International Space Station, three crew members of Expedition 41 are back on solid ground. Flight engineers Alexander Gerst, KF5ONO of Germany, Reed Wiseman, KF5LKT of the United States, and Commander Max Surave landed safely in Kazakhstan on Sunday night, November 9th, after a three-and-a-half-hour descent from the orbiting outpost in a Soyuz vehicle. While on orbit, Gerst, signing OR4ISS, made contact with several Earthbound stations, including one with the Explorers Club on October 25th. During that exchange, he got to speak to Apollo 16 astronaut Charlie Duke, Duke asked Gerst what was the most interesting in-flight experiment that he was working on. Gerst had a hard time in declaring any one in particular. Their replacements will launch to the ISS November 24th. And only a few weeks ago, the International Space Station marked the 14th anniversary of the arrival of its first crew. The station's been manned continuously since November 2nd, 2000. On the air, Patrick Stoddard, WD9EWK, has secured the special call sign W7O for use in commemorating the 40th anniversary of the launch of AMSAT Oscar 7. That took place November 15, 1974, from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Stoddard plans on having the W7O call for 10 days between November 15th and the 24th, working many of the ham radio satellites as he can and possibly terrestrial ham radio bands as well. Stoddard says that he will work as many birds as he can from his location in Arizona, including passes of the now four-decade-old AMSAT Oscar 7. He may also recruit some operators to work high-frequency bands using the W70 commemorative call. If you want to volunteer or have any questions related to this operation, contact Stoddard directly via email to patrick at wd9ewk.net. Stoddard adds the W70 call can only be operated from U.S. territory where amateur radio is regulated by the FCC. 
And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you each and every week for over 35 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. With Hal Rogers, KHCMD, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Wasn't aware that I was, uh, I was uh, you know, letting out my secret identity there. I forgot I had the Batman shirt on. That's all right. <laughs> You're in good hands, citizens. And now let's turn it over to Robin. See what's going on with smoke and solder. Carry on. Well, sir. I got one of these, Don, and uh, you know it's green. So yeah, it's the wrong. It's the wrong color for your uh, for your chroma key. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it really won't work here. We've got a a tower on it. It's it's like the invisible Dell we had earlier. You, you really can't see. <laughs> Transparent. It. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's take a look at this and see what this thing is. Recently, Peter, my partner on Amateur Logic from Down Under, showed us a Fish 8840 component tester. It was a neat little device, does a lot of things. Well, Bruce, N1EBQ, was the winner of the Chameleon MCOM antenna on the Smoke and Solder Contest recently. He thought that Tommy and I should have a Fish 8840 of our own, so he sent us a couple. Let's just take a quick look at it. The tester has a ZIF socket to connect components. That's a zero insertion force. You put your components in there and then flip the lever, and that tightens down the clamps on it. And there's also some pads here for testing surface mount components. Let's just stick a resistor in here. You know, resistors are getting smaller, and like on these blue ones here, without a magnifying glass, it's a little difficult for me to determine what colors are on there. I could use an old meter to do that or I can use this device. Now you'll notice that there's numbers 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3. There are three test points for each component you want to test here and these are just doubled up. A 1 is the same here or here. A 2 is the same here or here and there's several 3's on here. Well if you want to test a component you can just stick it in any two. The bottoms and the tops are the same. Just uh, for the resistor, we're going to put it on one and three. Three here on the bottom and take a one from the top. Flip the lever over and then push the test button. And it tells me this is 10.11k ohms. And that's correct because this is a 10k ohm resistor. Now you notice I take the resistor out, it's still reading. You have to reset this device between each test. That's one thing I'm not crazy about on it, but still a uh, neat little tester. Uh, let's do it again. I'm going to put it on a, one of the two holes here, and we'll stick it back up here on one again. And this is a 299.9 ohm resistor, and that's correct because the color code says it's a 300 ohm. You can test other components with it too, though. We can check capacitors. This one is a 2200 microfarad at 35 volts. Well, it won't tell us anything about the voltage. And one thing to keep in mind is the voltage is limited as to what it's going to test with. So some components that require a higher voltage are not really going to test right in it. It's taken a little longer to figure the capacitor out. 2352 microfarads and an ESR of 0.00 ohms. That's pretty good. What that is is the equivalent series resistance. You know, a capacitor is going to have some resistance on the leads and on the internal plates in there. And that's what this is a measure of. And the lower the ESR, the better. The V loss we see up there on the top, I believe, means voltage loss, and it's 0.9%. Now, here's another capacitor. I'm not even sure what this one is. Let's see if we can tell. I believe it's an 18 picofarad. So we'll stick it in here. Well, it can't read that capacitor. And I don't know what range of values this device will work with when testing components. I just couldn't find that information online. Now let's check it with an inductor. 0.92 millihenries and the resistance in the wire of it is 0.3 ohms. And that is a 0.9 millihenry choke, so 
It's okay. And you can check transistors with this, too, and I think that's primarily what it was designed for. Here's a little small signal transistor here, a silicon type. This device does not work good with germanium transistors. Let's just try this transistor and see if we can tell anything about it. And it's telling me it's an NPN. It's got a gain of 288. And the VF is 650 millivolts. Now you'll notice it's got numbers here. That's identifying the pins of the transistor. It's telling us that pin 1 is the emitter, pin 2 is the base, pin 3 is the collector. Or we could look right here, 1, 2, 3, EBC. Now you can check various other components with this. You can check uh, triax, uh, different type of solid state components, but a lot of these are not going to work right because this device just doesn't put out enough voltage to really get them in their operating range. You can check diodes with it as well. It'll check zeners, but only up to 5 volts since that's a voltage limit on it. But a nice little device. I was kind of curious what was in this thing. And at the heart of it right here is a Mega 328P microcontroller. You know, that's uh, very similar to the one used in the Arduino Uno. Then there's a few surface mount capacitors and resistors on here. What looks to be an 8 megahertz crystal. Uh, this is a 78L05. That's a 5 volt regulator. And some more resistors and capacitors. So this thing works mostly with the software that's on it and a few minimal components to run the microcontroller. There's several revisions of this device around. This one I've got has a, a fairly large battery drain even when the power is off. And if you look here, the positive of the battery is this lead right here. If we follow that on out, we see it goes to one side of a capacitor down to this resistor and then goes under that diode over here to R15, and R15 is connected down to R8, and then the other side of that goes to ground, which is the center terminal of the regulator here. So you've got these two 47K ohm resistors across the battery all the time, even when it's not on. So we can fix that problem. We can cut the trace that goes over here to the resistor and feed this instead with the input voltage to the regulator here, which will be after the power switch and will draw much less current. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife here and just carefully cut that trace. Now I've cut the trace completely through and I measured it just to make sure that it did go through, and it is. So this point right here is isolated now. So I'm going to put a jumper wire from this side of the resistor down here to this hole that should have been C20, which was not used on this board. It also goes to the input of the regulator. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is tin that side of the resistor with some good old lead solder here so that I know it's going to stick pretty quick. Now let's make sure that our wire is firmly connected, and it is. And now we'll put the other side through that hole right there on top. And the insulation got a little hot, and it tried to jump back out of the way, but that's not going to matter because there's nothing that this wire is touching that it shouldn't be. I'll just clip that spare insulation off. Now let's put the unit back together and see if that battery tester circuit still works. Hmm, 5.1 volts. <laughs> I would say no. No, it's say an unknown or damaged component, not the unit here. So let's see what we got wrong. The voltage regulator is a 78L05, and I just assumed that pin 1 was the input to it. Well, that's wrong. Pin 3 here is actually the input. So what I'll need to do is just move my jumper wire from here over to this spot. And now here's our new jumper wire in the right position from our uh, input side of R15 here on down 
to the positive pin on this missing capacitor, which should be the input to the regulator. The reason we need the input is because we want to measure the battery voltage going in because we know on the outside it's going to be 5 volts, and that's what we were seeing was 5.1 when we had it there. So let's try this out. Power on. 8.8 volts, the same thing we were getting before. And now we're drawing much less current when the unit is not in use. It's only drawing about a microamp, so we don't have to disconnect the battery. I would be remiss in not telling you that you shouldn't go putting jumper wires on PC boards without knowing what you're doing. In this case, I knew that if I had it on the wrong side of the regulator, it wasn't going to hurt anything. So uh, no problems there. I just moved it over to where it should be to measure the correct voltage. But do be careful when you're modifying circuits. Well, there you go. If, if you're interested in one of those, do a search for FISH 8840, and you'll come up with a number of places you can buy it. It's all over eBay, and they're not very expensive, less than 30 bucks. A handy little extra device to have on your bench there. I won't throw away my Simpson 260, but, you know, I'll use this every now and then, and it'll be pretty handy for checking some different uh, type of components. Uh, you know, I've got some Blonox towers here behind me. For the last couple of weeks, we've had some on there, and there's not a lot of these left out in the field anymore. But I did manage to find a couple more here to show you this week. And here they are. This first one is WFEA. That one is 350 foot. It's in Manchester, New Hampshire. And it's on this side, right there. 350 feet, not quite as tall as uh, uh, WSM or as WLWs, but, you know, still a reasonably tall tower. And on the other side, we've got uh, what's known as the Riga Tower. It's 410 feet, and it's in, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Olbroka, uh, Latvia. And that's it's the second tower back there, the one that's, uh, well... It looks shorter there, 410 feet, though. And I'm not sure if that one's still standing or not. It, it may have been dismantled in the last few years, but there's not a lot of those towers left out there, but they're, I don't know, just a curiosity to see something like that. Well, I asked a question about this subject last week. I said, uh, other than towers, what is Blonox known for? And I got an answer here from Tim Zimmerman, WB3HBX, and he said they were manufacturers of heavy equipment, especially road paving equipment. And that's correct, Tim. So you're going to win this MFJ telescopic antenna. It's good for uh, scanner or receiver use. You could probably use it on your handy talkie too for VHF and UHF. It's hinged. It's got a BNC connector on it. And it's the MFJ 1811, uh, 1.8 to 1800 megahertz. So for next week, we've got another question here. And it's going to be on that FISH 8840 we just looked at. You know, that thing can test resistors, capacitors, inductors, transistors. And it really does that with, uh, within the limits of that microcontroller on there. So what I want to know is, what two parameters does the FISH 8840 use to measure components? And if you think you know the answer to that, send your answer to me at hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you might win this pair right here. It's a HAL HBA a Bluetooth adapter. It's got an XLR connector on one end. This is a transmitter unit. Connect that to the end of your microphone. And the other end is a receiver with a quarter-inch phone plug on it. Plug that into your rig or an adapter cable or your mixer or whatever. And you've got Bluetooth microphone. So you can get up to 30 feet away from your rig and still talk. And it'll eliminate ground loops too because no ground loops through air. So send your answer to me, uh, hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could win. And now we've got a message from ICOM, and then I've got some special announcements for you afterwards. Got a license or just upgraded? Get on HF with ICOM. Check out the IC7200, IC7410, and IC7100. Each feature ICOM's signature DSP technology. 
The IC7200 is an entry-level radio that's packed with quality features, including AGC loop management, built-in digital filters, twin-pass band tuning, and manual notch filter. You also get digital noise reduction and noise blanker in this high-stability transmitter, and you can take this rig out of the shack. It's built military tough with waterproof buttons and knobs. The IC7410 is a high-performance radio for everyday HF communications. Features include fast digital signal processing, double conversion super heterodyne system, built-in 15 kilohertz first IF filter with optional 3 kilohertz and 6 kilohertz first IF filters. This promotes enhanced operation on C and single sideband modes. The IC7100 employs multiband and all mode digital operation right at your fingertips. Features include touchscreen and angled control head for optimal viewing, 32-bit floating point DSP for powerful HF operation, and optional RSBA1 IP remote control software. Look to the future of HF with this D-Star radio. So whether you've just got your license or just upgraded, get on HF with ICOM. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Throw your name in the hat for some great prizes from the ICOM swag store. Hats and t-shirts, a lot of different items there. If uh, you'd like to enter, well, go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation and fill out the entry form there. You're also going to be registered to win the November grand prize. And that's going to be the Simple and Tough IC7200 HF rig with IFDSP, AGC loop management, USB connectivity for audio and control, digital filters and noise reduction, plus a lot more. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this episode and each episode of Ham Nation and register to win. And I promise you some uh, late-breaking news here. I got this from Ray Novak, who is preparing his uh, Santa sleigh ride for the holidays coming up here. And this is not published anywhere yet. You can go to icomamerica.com slash amateur within the next couple of days, and you'll find a link here that gives all the details on this. Or when you enter the contest there, in the comments, just uh, make a note that uh, you want to know about the D-Star Infrastructure Program. What it is is ICOM is uh, stepping up that promotion a little bit for D-Star Infrastructure in time for the holidays. Uh, you can get a D-Star repeater for your area, and if you haven't made your shopping decisions yet, uh, go check it out. Uh, Black Friday, they're going to have a special on a lot of different ICOM radios, and I've I've got a list of them here, and it's some... Going to be some um, some good price reductions there for Black Friday, so go check that out. But if you purchase a D-Star radio between November 15th and December 31st of 2014, ICOM USA and ICOM Canada are having a special promotion for each radio that's purchased in your area. Uh, you'll get so many points, uh, depending on which radio model you get, you'll earn points toward an I-Star, ICOM D-Star repeater, and you can combine points with others, say, in your club or in your area. Uh, if a number of people buy radios, they can add up the points earned together and um, get an I-Star, uh, I-Star, an ICOM <laughs> D-Star repeater for, uh, for your ham club or group. So uh, go check that out at icomamerica.com slash amateur. And like I say, the next couple of days, this should be posted on there. And there's going to be uh, some more special things coming, too, that are uh, so special, I can't even talk about them yet, Don. Wow, that is cool. Hey, um, I was going to save this for later, but you, you came back to me. I wanted to show you my own little Blahnox tower. I've got a, I've got a little Blahnox tower. Check, check this out. This is the Mississippi ham plate. Yeah. Ah, and isn't that cool as that can be? Did you go and take that off of your truck just so we could look at it? No, actually, um, this was on the Toyota that got totaled out, and I don't have the uh, title in yet for the uh, for the for the Pontiac for the Firebird. So, um, my my O one Firebird that was a replacement. So this is just laying around in the back of the Firebird. I'm waiting on the title to come in so I can actually go and put this on the new car, but. I thought, you know, I've been thinking the last few weeks, and so I got to get a picture of the license plate. I keep forgetting. I thought, well, hell, I got it in the back of the car. 
right there. Yep. Ball Knox Tower on the on the, that is the. You know, I've seen a lot of state ham plates, but I, I haven't seen too many that are just as classy as as this one from Mississippi. Plus, it's green. Green's my favorite color. So, yeah, I I've got one that. of those on the back of my truck too, but it doesn't say uh, AE5 DW on mine. Must be a misprint or something. Yeah, they misspelled it. <laughs> they misspelled yours. Yeah, it should say all the all the really classy ones say AE5 DW. So <laughs> you you got you got a you you got I don't know you got a I don't know. The convicts must have been drunk or something that day <laughs> when they did yours because mine looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have Dale save us. What do you think? That's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know whether we can do that, guys, or not. We'll, well give it a try. try <laughs> Fantastic. We, uh, we were very lucky while we were out of town. We had three pretty nice videos come in, and we're going to show them all to you this evening. There was an annual event. Uh, balloon launch and a noise finding exercise. So uh, let's travel now down to the panhandle of Texas, the town of Paris, and visit the main trading company. Uh, that company is turning Ham Radio Day into an annual event and also a community event. And with that report, we've got David Hunt. He's KE5BMY. On Saturday, October the 18th, the city of Paris, Texas, observed Ham Radio Day. It was proclaimed by the mayor and celebrated by hundreds of people at Main Trading Company. Several vendors were on hand to help with the celebration, including Kenwood, MFJ, Radio Waves, and Houston Amateur Radio. Lunch was provided courtesy of Kenwood along with live music most of the day. Drawings were held throughout the day. Over $10,000 worth of prizes was given away, including a Kenwood TS-990. Main Trading Company would like to thank all of their customers and everyone who helped to make this a wonderful event. Well, thanks, David. More than 300 people attended Ham Radio Day in Paris, Texas. There was a barbecue lunch for those 300. It was provided by Kenwood. And check this, there was live music and the door prize, a grand prize, was a Kenwood TS 990S, a 990S. Well, next up, Vincent Webb. He's in 5NXW. He's a storm chaser down in Mississippi. He captured the excitement of a balloon launch and the retrieval at the Old Town Middle School. That's in George's hometown there in Jackson, Mississippi. Let's take a trip now to 63,000 feet. Mission, location, altitude, temperature. Everything ready to go. The balloon is ready. We're about to fill it. As you can see behind us, we've got all the students and everybody that are currently getting everything ready. All the APRS equipment, all the batteries attached, and the other GoPro cameras as well. So hopefully we'll reach 100,000 feet. We'll see you back on the ground.
Live TK. We're currently out here just close to Highway 21. Uh, we just came off the bridge and we've really gotten the coordinates on where the balloon is and where the uh, where it's really pinging the location. We've also got a uh, antenna that we're going to be using, but as you can see, the terrain behind us is awful. So we are now dropping through the swamps off of Highway 21. That's the length of a tree. We're in what, Scott County right now? Yeah. In Scott County, south of 21. Been walking, trekking through the muck water, swamp, swamp and warmness of Mississippi. This has been to 62,000 feet high. There's the first one. And here's the fear no cash. All right, so I don't know who's going to fight over which, which coin. Uh, it doesn't matter. So, Go ahead. Take one. This is y'all. Thank you, Bill. All right. Thank y'all for helping find it. Thank you, Enjoy it. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, Vincent. The balloon carried a payroll, a payload, rather, of radio equipment, cameras, and science experiments. Those experiments were created by the students. Billy Richardson, a teacher and well-known ham in the Jackson area, coordinated the project. Well, we're going to close out tonight's videos with a noise-finding exercise. It was conducted and reported by Brian Harper, He's KD8SNH. Hey guys, this is Brian, KD8SNH. Uh, going to go through a little troubleshooting issue I had to go with my radio, uh, so let me just delve right into it. Okay guys, I got you zoomed into my radio here. Uh, as you can tell, got a 40 over signal. That seems pretty good, so let's turn it up and find out what we have. Well, that's no good. And it seems to be on every band. So uh, some of the troubleshooting I've done up to this point is I've powered this radio on from battery to eliminate my power supply. Uh, I've turned off all my computer equipment, uh, just everything around in the room, exact same noise problem. So we're gonna go ahead and move outside and see what we can figure out from there. So this is how I'm gonna troubleshoot my, uh, my power line noise problem. All right, here's my two meter Yagi antenna that I've built a while back. And I've got it hooked up to my handy talkie. Go ahead and fire this on. And right away you can hear that I'm getting noise. I've got it tuned to two meters. That's what the antenna's tuned for, so put on two meters. Uh, as you can see right there, it's at AM. So let's, let's see. Let's point it over towards my, the carpool of my neighbors. And I'm getting a uh, S2, so that's probably not likely no problem. So rotate it along. Oh, here we go. And look. Well, what do you see there? So yeah, we're, we're talking up at about 60 over. So I'd have to say that's probably what like, my power line noise problem is. So now it's time to get a hold of the electrical utility and see if we can get that resolved. Well, thanks, Brian. Brian's report started when he put up his first HF antenna and soon discovered he had an S9 plus noise level. 
He's reported the faulty insulators, and he's still waiting for the local power company to fix that situation. Next week, I hope to present a video that demonstrates the amazing noise reduction you can achieve with a pair of small active antennas and the DX Engineering NCC1 phase controller. A lot of fun building that and shooting the video. Hopefully, uh, uh, you'll be very impressed. We almost have enough shack photos now, too, for another Show Me Your Shack. So in the next week or two, please send your shack photos and the links to your videos, if you have them, to Ham Nation Videos at TWIT.TV, and we'll uh, get them on Ham Nation for you. We'll be visiting uh, the chat room soon and talking to Amanda, but first we need to check out the latest from Nature Box from Don. Don, take it away. Yeah, Nature Box. I love Nature Box. This episode, as a matter of fact, of Ham Nation is brought to you by Nature Box. And Nature Box right now giving you a chance to get a complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks, and you just pay two bucks for shipping. Now, you know, normally at this point, I would be eating the Nature Box stuff right here and showing you just how delicious it is. But I'm not doing that tonight for two reasons. One, because, well, it's rude and I don't have enough to share. But two, well, I ran out. So that's why. But anyway, George probably has his nature box handy. And if he does, I want you to start munching, George. Go ahead. So drop the... Look at him. Look at... See, I ran out. I have no willpower. When it comes to nature box, I have no willpower. I want you to take your candy bars, take your potato chips, and give them to the dog. No, don't give them to the dog. You, you need to put bark box for the dog. Give them to the neighbor's dog because they're not good for you. Do what I do. You get delicious. And what George does right there, delicious, wholesome snacks at nature box. You have a hunt. What do you? That, oh, that's I know what that is. That's that's the uh, that's the pineapple, isn't it? Just not. It is. That See, is don't talk too. with your mouth full. That's rude. This is a nature. This is a classy commercial. You're talking with your mouth full. Well, if it wasn't, wouldn't you? It'd be me. So go ahead, talk with your mouth full. That's good though. That's that's the uh, that's the pineapple. What else you got? What's in the other bag? Mm. Too many moving. Are the the questions are getting easier, George. What's in the other bag? The other bag is. <laughs> What was my favorite and which is now empty is uh -huh. the sea salt pop pops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I took care of those the other day, actually. Hundreds of delicious snacks, and you don't have to feel guilty about eating them because they're better for you. Zero artificial flavors, zero colors, zero sweeteners, zero grams of trans fats, and no high fructose corn syrup either. It's good for you. Also, you'll find snacks with no added sugar and without gluten. So when you're hungry in the afternoon, do what I do. Grab some lemon pucker pistachios from Nature Box or stra ooh, strawberry Greek yogurt pretzels. The mango orange fruit chews, those are good too. It's all good. Everything I've eaten from Nature Box is wonderful. And I'd be chewing along too, but like I said, I ran out. So good and it's so much better for you than other snack options out there. So I want you to uh, get in touch with Nature Box. Get your trial today. Get your complimentary sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. N-A-T-U-R-E-B-O-X dot com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, and start snacking smarter. And you see, you see these, these, these bags are not that big. You can throw them in your desk drawer at home. Uh, really, really easy to do. Start snacking smarter, stay full, and stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit, naturebox.com slash twit. Thank you so much, Naturebox, for the lovely snacks and for your support of this fine program. And speaking of this fine program, we have uh, the, the most attractive <laughs> portion of the fine program tonight, and that, of course, would be Amanda. Oh, thank you, Don. See? Hey, I wish I could try those. I, I've got to order some, you guys. You make them sound so good. So, um, They're good. All right. Thanks, Don. By the way, I have a question for you. Um, someone was uh, watching the video, and it was W8SS Joe. He would like to know, how does Christopher provide DC to his bicycle? Uh, he might. I don't know. I didn't see what kind of radio it was. Um, it might just have a handy talkie on there. But either way, I mean, you know, you can get a little... Uh, you know what I used to do when I was when I was Christopher's age? I uh yeah, it looks like he's got a handy talk. No, he doesn't. He's got a mobile radio. No. Zoom in on that. Zoom in on that. What's he got? Uh he might have a battery. He might have a battery in that. Yeah, he may have some batteries in that. I don't know. I can't tell what kind of radio. Unless it is a handy talkie with a speaker mic on it. That I don't know. I'll have to too. ask. Jocelyn, Jocelyn is in the uh, his dad is in the is in the chat room. What what radio is that? Jocelyn, give us a somebody watch the chat room and you'll get information on like that. When I was a kid, I had a CB radio on a bicycle and it wasn't near as cool as that first off it was a cb radio and second of all <laughs> uh, i had a i had a 102 inch whip on the on the back on the uh did you really the, 
I did. Yeah. On, on the, That's on the fine. back, on the back axle. And then I decided that that wasn't very safe. So I, I did something better. I got one of those little, you know, those little, little, I don't know, like 18 or 20 inch tall, uh, gutter mount, uh, clips you know, that you put on the rain gutter. And I, I put that on the, on the, on the tube on top. And that was real safe. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, better, uh, I, I can think of more dangerous things to do on the bicycle. Anyhow, yeah, uh, we'll are. look for that answer. And yeah. um, George, I have a question. This is from Randy, K7AGE. I thought he knew everything, you guys. So this is surprising. Uh, George, Randy wants to know, how did you figure out how to rewire the tester in your video? Uh, good question. And he busted. He caught me. I, I actually went looking online to try to find some information on the tester because... Uh, nothing came with it, and I really couldn't find a document on it, but I found a good thread, and I can't remember what website it was on right now, but somebody was talking about that, and I went and looked at the unit, and sure enough, he was right. It was just uh, two 47K ohm resistors in series across the battery, so uh made perfect sense to move it over to the regulator because there's a transistor switch right before that that removes the voltage, so... Uh, yeah, you notice this one, uh, when I got this thing, oh, several weeks ago, I left the battery on it for a couple of weeks and it was a nine volt battery and it was already down to 8.8. .8. So, uh, yeah, a definite good hack there. If you got one of these. Very good. Thank you. And I know Randy appreciates the answer there as well. Okay. Speaking let's, of uh, answers, that, that was a, uh, Christopher's dad jumped in. That is a handy talk he's using. So, oh, okay, great. That explains so the battery. Easy to power up that way. All right. And uh, that was a great install, by the way. That looks very clean and professional. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. All right. Um, let's go to Dale. Dale, um, we've got a couple of questions about how to find out old call signs or when you were licensed. So the first one from Jeff in 3VE wants to know how we can find out when he was first licensed since he's changed his call sign uh, two times. Oh, boy. I, I think I'd start at qrz.com and uh, look up his current call sign. A lot of times there's information there. If he does have a page, uh, the station you're looking for, they often uh, post their old call signs uh, on that page also. Uh, and then there's the FCC database where you can look up uh, any call sign uh, also. So if you know an old call sign you think someone had it, you could probably check that old call sign also. Uh, does that sound right, Don or Amanda? That does sound right, actually. Um, and when in doubt, Google it. You know, I mean, it's amazing what you can find with a Google search. Uh, so, oh, yeah, amazing. when in doubt, yes. yeah, Google it. You're absolutely correct. And by the way, um, our search and rescue here found a photo from 1970. And they said, okay, so here's this photo of this guy operating the amateur radio stuff, and here is his call sign, and it did have his call sign. They had, we had no idea who this guy was. He's here from here locally. I just stuck in the call sign, and guess what? His QSL card showed up on eBay for sale. So um, you never know what you're going to find out there. And this, um, to answer the next question I have in line with this, a guy would like to know how he could find his grandfather's license and if he could use it when he gets his ticket. Now, he says that his grandfather's passed for seven years, so I'm not sure the availability of his call sign. Does anyone know about that? Wow. Uh, yeah, as far as vanity call, there used to be a thing. When I got my vanity call, there was a thing, vanityhq.com. I don't think it's up anymore. In fact, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's not up anymore. They were they were a, a clearinghouse strictly for uh, vanity call signs. I'll tell you what is a really, really good resource is W5YI. W5YI.org, you can uh, not only um, get the Gordon West books at W5YI and a whole lot of other stuff, but they also will help you, I think, with vanity calls and with renewals and everything, too. So that's always worth a shot is to check out W5YI.org because if, if anybody knows, it's probably those guys. Awesome. That's good. And, um, you know, it's always a time of um, show us your ugly sweater. And so... When uh, Dale mentioned, show us your shack this time around, uh, Randy, K7AG, what a brilliant guy. He said, we need some messy shack photos. Like, show me your ugly sweater of ham shacks. Let's see them. I think we should do that. What do you think? <laughs> I could just uh, pick the camera up here and could, spin it uh, in my chair. Get those on. Me Remember, too. <laughs> Randy did that one time. He, uh, he sent in a before and after shot 
The before shot was when he had his ham shack totally torn apart and was rewiring and rebuilding everything. But he did send the uh, current shot, too, that shows that it's really not that way. But uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of people enjoyed that picture of Randy's shack then. So uh, get them to us. And uh, you might send a before and after, though, and we'll uh, see if we can get them together for you. Very good. I think it's kind of funny. But like Don was saying, my shack is like that every day. So um, let's not talk about that. All right, you guys, I have some announcements too. Uh, some upgrades and um, definitely some upgrades. Here locally, I have Devin and he's about 12 years old. KD0YZO just upgraded to general. Congrats. And his dad, K0JMC, just upgraded to extra last Saturday. So congrats to you guys. And also KY... KY9 USN upgraded to general this week as well. So great, you guys. I can't wait to hear you on the HF bands. Hopefully we'll hear you tonight. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else except for I got this cool little thing in the mail this weekend um, from, and I'm going to have to look up his call sign. Sorry about that. KI6YWX sent this little power pole tester. So here's this little light. You plug it into the end of your power pole. And I'm sorry if I'm a little shaky. If it turns red, it's bad. If it turns green, you did it right. And if you didn't do it right, he sends this and you can just switch it around and it makes it the correct way. So if you guys have any questions or want to look at um, how to get one of those, go to his QRZ page, I'm sure. And uh, you can find that out. So with that, um, let's send it around for a round table here. Uh, George, take it away. Well, here's a look at my shack, Amanda. You, yeah, and and that's yeah. a uh, that's a that's a couple of chickens in here. I don't know how they got in. I keep running them out, but you know, uh, as long as they're bringing eggs, I guess. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Better better than a little bit of uh, the piglets, you know, fighting for competition. I don't know. I was trying to come up with something that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, well, so were the chickens. I couldn't come up with anything for that either. By the way, in Dale's video earlier with the Old Town Middle School balloon launch, that's in Ridgeland, Mississippi. That's that's where I live, and I know most of those guys in that video there. I know uh, Bill Richardson, the teacher, and um, uh, sort of the organizer of that balloon launch. I know uh, Vincent Webb. As a matter of fact, I saw him this past weekend. He was at... Um, uh, day in the park that we had here. Some amateurs uh, got together and just had a good time on Saturday. And I know Rez and uh, his son, the, the people who found the balloon. So, uh, uh, yeah, always a fun event. Well, I've uh, recorded a couple of those in the past. We've got some footage of it over on a couple of uh, older amateur logic episodes. Uh, interesting thing happens when they send the crickets up in that experiment, but I won't tell you about that. Oh, I can't wait to find out. And uh, here locally in Colorado, I am working with um, a huge amount of students at uh, our hams. And uh, they just uh, put up a high altitude balloon. And I told them that the video would be on. And they're going to go more into the semantics of how the operation works. So to answer one person's question on chat, they said, there must be a reason they're wearing gloves. Guess what? There is because they fill those balloons up now with um, hydrogen and not helium. I know that sounds crazy, but helium is so expensive now that hydrogen is the way to go. So um, that's just one informational piece there. And um, can't wait to show their video as well. Some really smart kids out there. And you guys are going to learn about their payloads and such. So, um, Don, anything else? Holy no, humanity. I, I, I show, yeah, I, no, I, I, well... Well, while George was John, I just grabbed my camera and panned around a little bit. And so you got to see what my, this place is, that's why I never moved my camera. If my wife knew I did that, she'd kill me. It's horrible. <laughs> that's so funny. It's, it's what nasty. about you, Dale? Do you have a clean shack? Uh, no, not really. I'm, I'm piled in here with all the equipment in a, a really small, really small room. So uh, we, clean, we clean it up though. It looks pretty good. I, I think it's presentable. And we've got it uh, ready for Thanksgiving here on the on the monitor in the back. So uh, I think we're ready. And uh, want to get that video done for everyone about the uh, phase controlling of the antennas to reduce noise. Uh, fascinating uh, experiments I was doing with that uh, before we left, uh, left town and uh, traveled for a little bit. And uh, I think everyone's going to enjoy that, uh, Amanda. Go ahead. 
That's great. Thank you so much. And um, I didn't, I turned off uh, the web site um, when you guys were discussing right before they called me up for the show. Did we decide we're having a show next weekend or, or next week or not? No. 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 We're, we're okay. Not. So, everybody, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I just saw uh, Randy posted in the chat room there. He's going to be on uh, 7.071 uh, after the show working some PSK 31 tonight. So I think I'm going to have to get over there and see if I can hear the West Coast. There you go. Okay, and I've got a quick question from uh, Ray. In 9 ja I don't know if anyone knows that guy. I've never heard of him. But, hey, uh, George, uh, what episode did uh, you and Tommy cover the flexible solar panels from Dayton? Do you hmm. remember? Uh, good question. If you just go to uh, amateurlogic.tv slash wiki and in the search there, type in power film, and I believe it'll, it'll point you to the correct episode. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, after 200 videos, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up with when you did what. I agree. I don't remember what I did, you know, two hours ago, so. Me either. <laughs> That's why I have this, so I know what my call sign is. Okay. Oh, very yes, helpful. Well, my call sign By is. the way, yeah. you said that was green. I don't see where the green is. Oh, it is. It's green. No, it's green. It's, it's, um... It's dark green. No, but it, no it's, it's it's definitely. I mean, it's it's definitely green. It looks black, still but still looking no, it's black. Green. Yeah, okay. It's green. It's, I'll take me, your it's word green. for it. It's green. Yep, it's green. I think we're about done tonight, uh, guys. If uh, I think we've covered about everything that we should cover, haven't we? I think so. I think so. Did we get all the uh, net um, uh, frequencies out there? Yeah, no, George, yeah. R run the nets down. Okay, I uh, forty meters. I don't know. Do you know that one, Dale? For tonight? Uh, no, I sure don't. I uh, don't have the radio on here this evening because we're going to skip the sack and get over the rest of this cold here, I think, after the show here. Okay. I'll and take, uh, 20, meters. Listen, though. Yeah, 20 meters. I don't see that one either in the chat room here. I'm sure Hi. someone has posted it. It'll be somewhere around 14.268 in that neighborhood. Uh, 40 meters, somewhere around 7.278. Just depends, you know, these mm -hmm. shift from week to week, depending on if someone's already on the frequency. Mm -hmm. Cheryl is going to be on 80 meters at 3847. D-Star, you can find that at uh, Reflector 14, Module C. And Echo Link is always, of course, at Star, do drop in Star 355800. And Amanda, it was good to hear you on the Amateur Logic D-Star net this past week. Well, thank you. I wish I was on D-Star, but it wasn't. Um, it was Echo Link. Um, uh, we had a lot of fun. I haven't ever listened to that net before, and I, we had the free time, so I said, hey, let's link it up. So we did. But uh, that was fun. Fun to hear some people that were on chat every night, every Wednesday night, and uh, finally got to hear their voices. So that was cool, too. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. I think, you, can't you check it? Ham Nation, is it Ham Nation 40? Dot com or hamnation40.net uh, for the uh, Ham Nation 40 meter net online. You know, what I know the best thing the, to do is to follow the them on Twitter. Yeah, 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 Twitter. yeah exactly. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, the and a special announcement. Uh, yeah. The, the D Star group has hamnationdstar.net. And if you go there, it'll give you some information about the net. But they've also got a listen link on there where you can listen to the D Star net if you don't have D Star yourself. Oh, cool. So wow, that's that neat. is awesome. I'm going to have awesome. to check that out for sure. Neat stuff. All right. Well, I think we've just about covered everything. Amanda, George, Dale, thank you all for being here. And I guess, uh, you know, of course, we won't be here next week because it will be Thanksgiving. So we wish you all a, a blessed Thanksgiving. And we'll see you after Thanksgiving. And, uh, of course, Gordon and... Uh, and Bob are out on the road tonight. So for for uh, for Gordon and Bob and and Brian and everybody else who works on this show, we appreciate you being here. We wouldn't be here if you weren't there. So good night and seventy three from all your Ham Nation friends. Good night. Absolutely, I'm very thankful for Ham Nation and um, all of you guys. You're such great friends. And I forgot, Gordo sent me a message. Said his fuzzy hat and coat have come in very handy out there on the east coast so um i bet they he probably have. wishes i bet he wishes he was at home so gobble 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 turkey day all right happy Thanksgiving, yeah. everybody
Next time you, you see me at this set again, these two turkeys back here will be gone. <laughs>